This is the striped hyena, hyena hyena, this is the Latin name. It's the most wide ranging of the hyenids. It's, um, it lives in India, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq, the Middle East, the Arabian Peninsula, the Sahara, and all the way down to Kenya. So it's a very, very, uh, it's, a, it's an animal of a diverse landscape, be it, you know, scrubland, jungle, um, a lot of different environments, a lot of different niches, and it's never abundant. It's never a species that is abundant. It's kind of this solitary, rangy, shady, very rarely seen uh, little beast. This creature starts to display the very adaptations that give it the ability to get into tough foods. Hyena modality evolved from a uh, dog-like modality, canid, jackal type of modality in the hyenid lineage. As you grow, as an animal, a species, a taxon evolves into, into more derived forms, it, um, it adopts a, a, a different morphology across the generations. And so the, the hyena modality is, again, durophagus. They eat hard things. They eat tough things. They eat meat, but they eat also bone. Nutritious, abundant, yet hard to get, hard to get into. So it requires a lot of strength and a lot of power in your teeth and skull to break into bone. It's a very, very strongly constructed thing. A an animal with a proportionally bigger bite is going to have a proportionally adapted skull for that specialized way of biting efficiently. And it does so by having a really large sinus. Air cavity, we have them right here, and they have them right there. <laughs> the skull is pneumatized. It's energy that emanates here. You see this, this feature is called the sagittal crest. It runs perpendicular to the plane of gravity. It's the origin, the origin of a muscle that goes, that of a group of muscle that goes all the way down into this, onto this lever arm, the coronoid process. And your temporalis muscle, and your temporalis muscle basically ends just right here. That's the border of it. It's, it's just this tiny little sheet. In a hyena, it wraps all the way around his head. Those are the zygomatic arches. Note how wide they are. Note how, note how cut they are. That is so that there's a, a, the, a thick, so that thick muscle is called the zygomaticus attaches and goes down into this insertion here. That's so that it can have a lot of, a lot of space, a lot of surface onto which articu to articulate a muscle. Same thing on the lower jaw, that cornward process is elevated, the angular process, which is basically something that we don't really have, is this angle on our jaw here. Masseter muscle complex. Hyenas have a very powerful neck in the going up, raising up the muscles to attach to this very wide triangle. The next vertebrae attaches right this side. It's this butterfly shaped uh, bone that's very cool, very interesting. Occipital condyle. This allows the hyena to have a very powerful crunching bite and a very powerful neck. Teeth evolve from a multi-cuspid to becoming more blade-like and sharp and cone-like in mammals. And so note this cuspid. It is present in the striped hyena. That's a carnassial, that's a premolar, so that's a molar. Premolar, premolar, premolar. And this is the, uh, the battery of teeth that has evolved to be particularly powerful. Those are its canines, those are its incisors. In the top of its mouth, premolar, that's a premolar, that's not a molar. It's got a molar, which is much reduced. Premolar, 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 premolar. All of those, right? And those are starting to get really thick, really round, really cone-like. It's canines, incisors, are very firmly attached in the premaxilla, which is this, 
this, this structure here. The carnassial complex is right there. That's, that's the one right there. It's these two teeth coming in together at that scissor mark to shear meat. It's the next two premolars, these two, that come together to do that crushing, bone crushing, and making its neck twist in order to, to twist and pull. And they, be with, the, with their incredible teeth, incredible strong teeth and incredible strong bodies and incredibly strong stomach acids are able to digest stuff that is just, well, that you just, that, that like no other creature would consider as food, but, but these guys do. And that's because they have a very strong skull.